Hey guys, it's Craig here. Welcome back to Vinyl TV. I was thinking um, a few days ago um, about what the next video would be about. And I started thinking, what would be the best audio format ever? What would be the best audio storage format ever? Does it exist yet? Is it something we already have? So I started thinking about this and, you know, with all the, um, you know, the arguments about digital versus analog and all that kind of stuff, I started thinking about what formats have we had that were the best and what formats could we have that could be better? So let's go back a little bit and take a look at some of the things that we did deal with back in the day. So first of all, we've got tape, um, we've got cassettes, eight track um, and reel to reel are the three most popular consumer tape formats that uh, that we had available to us. Now let's get let's just talk about these for a minute because you know cassettes get a lot of bad rap and um, I saw somebody posted a comment underneath one of my videos recently something about you know if you think cassettes sound good you're deaf. Um, I disagree. I had a very expensive cassette deck years ago and um, I was able to make really good recordings. Uh, it had three heads, it had um, adjustable um, bias control, it had all the different noise reductions on them, which by the way aren't without their problems, but it was an improvement. Um, and of course the tape formulations as well, you know, chromium dioxide, uh, metal, and um, you know, those helped a lot as well in improving the sound quality. Cassettes are, are really were invented for voice dictation um, but advances in technology allowed them to be used for music and they can sound very good now cassettes run at a very slow speed one and seven eighth inches per second which is the slowest tape speed out of all the tape formats uh, made for music um, and the tape is very very narrow it's only an eighth of an inch wide so they have to cram four tracks of audio two for side a and two for side b uh, onto this little thin tape, um, you know, and so you didn't, you wouldn't think it would sound good, but they did. With all the advances in noise reduction and tape formulations and biasing, they could actually be made to sound really good. And I used to make copies of some of my CDs so I could make like mixtapes, you know, and uh, I A-B'd them and, <laughs> well, cassettes for, my cassettes sounded pretty good. I was able to make very good sounding cassettes. Not sure what if some of you have problems with it, but I didn't. So, a track, a track tapes had potential. I know they generally sound horrible. Um, very few people had an actual decent eight track player or recorder, and they never really went that far. Uh, the, the format kind of lost its integrity. Uh, eight tracks run at twice the speed as cassettes do. Uh, and the tape is twice as wide, so it's a quarter inch wide instead of an eighth inch wide. But eight tracks generally did not enjoy the tape formulations like chromium dioxide and metal. Um, so they were stuck with the old ferric oxide, and that's why they really didn't sound that great. Not only that, but most of the eight tracks that people listened to uh, were pre recorded, which means they were mass duplicated in high speed facilities, and they generally, you know, weren't weren't duplicated under ideal conditions just like cassettes weren't when you bought a cassette of an album um it it was really usually not very good sounding um but because eight tracks run at twice the speed had they been given a chance to enjoy some of these other tape formulations they could have sounded pretty good now in radio stations they used to use what are called carts and cart machines and a cart is just a, like a it's just it's like an eight track tape really it's got the same cartridge it's not compatible with eight tracks but it's the same idea it's a continuous loop of tape uh, that spools out of the center of the uh, reel of tape and around past the heads and then winds around back on the outside just like an eight track does but these tapes sounded good good enough that radio stations were you know using them for um, music and commercials. And I used to have a friend whose job was to transfer all the 45s that came in from the record companies onto cart tapes. 
and so that the DJs could rack them up behind them and then you could just pull them and easily cue them up a little easier than using vinyl. Um, of course, they still did use vinyl, but they used cart machines as well. And they also used them for um, commercials. And if you go on YouTube and you look up, you know, cart machine, um, tape cart machine, you can listen to some of these things. They sound, they sound good. You know, I mean, you know, certainly a lot better than 8-Track did. So, you know, the format potential was there with 8-Track, but it just never got pushed off the ground any further than, than it did. Now that leaves us with reel to reel. And this these are all, you know, obviously tape formats. Reel to reel, um, depending on the speed that you were running it at, um, they could also sound very, very good. Um, this is all analog stuff, so um, you know, it's not digital. So all you analog fans out there, this you know, this stuff is for you, for you. and especially reel to reel machines. They don't get the same bad rap that cassettes and eight tracks do. Generally, reel to reel machines are regarded as high quality tape recorders, and you know they can run at uh, three and a quarter inches per second, three three and three quarter inches per second, seven and a half inches per second, and even fifteen inches per second for some of the very high end ones. And in recording studios, they could run at thirty inches per second. So you know, depending on the speed, you could you could make a pretty damn good sounding recording at three and three quarter inches per second. And certainly a really good sounding recording at seven and a half inches per second. Um, I, I don't remember whether reel to reel machines used chromium tape or not. Maybe some of the higher end ones did. And I don't remember whether a lot of them had Dolby. I think some of them had Dolby, maybe DBX. But, um, you know, with that technology, these machines could sound good. And don't forget, most of the vintage vinyl records you're listening to today are made from these reel-to-reel -reel tapes we're speaking about. So you can't knock them. Um, and a lot of the older ones, like the 70s, you know, 70s albums you have, they were just, you know, seven and a half inches per second reel-to-reel -reel quarter inch tape. Just, you know, normal stuff that we can still get today, uh, if you're lucky. The problem with, you know, reel-to-reels, of course, is that the record companies didn't distribute albums on those and they were a little more cumbersome to use. You know, you had to put the reels on the machine and thread the tape and everything. But is that really any more difficult than cleaning and putting on a record? Right? So the format, um, it's too bad it didn't take off because now we're talking about, you know, reel to reel versus vinyl. Um, because reel to reels can sound very good. And so can vinyl. So what are the, you know, what are the differences? Okay. Well, vinyl, and I, you know, this is a vinyl channel. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to disrespect the format. But let's face it, vinyl is not perfect. Um, it's not without its problems. And if things aren't set up just right, it can sound bad. Um, so, and it's, you know, you've, you're never going to get rid of the pops and the clicks, no matter how you clean it, what kind of a machine you've got to clean your records. You're always going to have no surface noise on your records. And um, so, you know, it, and it, they're so fragile and you, you know, get one scratch or one piece of dirt on it. There you go. You've got a click or a pop. And it's just really... Uh, as much as we love our records, I'm thinking, you know, some alien somewhere is looking down and going, <laughs> look how they're playing their music. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's just, it, it's it's not perfect, but it is what it is. And it became the popular format back then. And of course, now it's coming back. But would it, wouldn't it have sounded better? Wouldn't it have music sounded better on reel to reel? Imagine reel-to-reel -reel becoming the popular format back then. So you would buy, you know, a reel-to-reel -reel machine, obviously, and then you would buy your records on tape. And, you know, this would be a hell of a lot easier for the record companies to produce because to make records, 
they've got to jump through hoops. I mean, you've got to you've got to carve, you know, you've got to you've got to cut the the lacquer of the the original lacquer, and then you've got to make stampers out of that, and then you've got to stamp the records out. Then you've got to make new stampers after a while because the old ones wear out. I mean, it's just a it's it's quite a procedure, you know. Uh, whereas you know, running off copies of reel to reel, that would be easy. Just duplicate duplicate the originals. And, you know, you could do that pretty easily. And they did it with cassettes and 8-tracks. Would they sound as good as vinyl? Yeah. In fact, they would lack the, the crackles and pops that vinyl has. Um, there's still going to be noise. Tapes, tape has noise. But at 7.5 inches per second, with a little help from some technology and some tape formulations like chromium dioxide, I think that reel-to-reel -reel would have been, and still could be, the best analog format out there. It's just that's not the path that we took. Um, records were just the way things went, and they were easier to collect and store and put on um, than reel-to-reels were. But if we're really worried about sound quality first and foremost, out of the two, I would choose reel to reel. You know, you've got your people out there spending, as far as I'm concerned, way too much money on turntables and just to try and get the most out of these records. But in, in you know, when you really come down to it, we're playing records. They can only sound so good. You know, they're records. I mean, they've got problems, you know. Um, Whereas tapes, which studios, recording studios used for years and years and years to make records with, they obviously had to sound good because that's what we were using to make the records. And if it, 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 all it would have taken is just a little extra effort on the consumer's part to take the tape out of the box, stick it on the machine, thread the tape around the heads, wind it on the other reel, and away you go. Okay? Now, it doesn't have the same random access capabilities that a record does. Um, you know, you've got to play the tape sequentially through. You can't jump from song to song. You'd have to fast forward or rewind or whatever, um, which is true. But most of us, when we listen to a, a, an album, we don't skip the songs. We listen to the entire album. So that wasn't really, wouldn't have really been a, been a problem. I hope I haven't offended anybody because this is a vinyl channel. But if tapes... If reel to reels became the popular format and it was coming back today, this channel will be called Reel to Reel TV. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about digital because there's a whole different area here. You either love it or you hate it. When CDs came out, I was very happy. I was tired of vinyl. I was tired of replacing needles. I was tired of figuring out how to line up my cartridge um, with no internet and no, never any proper instructions how to do so. Um, my records never sounded that great. And I used to record them on cassettes anyway. So there you go. Um, and they sounded, to me, they sounded just as good on cassette as they did originally on the records. Because again, I could, I could make good cassette recordings. I just knew how to do it. And I had good, good cassette decks. CDs... It, they're capable of producing all the frequencies that we can hear us as humans. Okay. A sine wave from 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz um, is a pretty good frequency response. And, you know, as soon as you're born, you start losing your hearing. So, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I could hear up to 20,000 Hertz, but now I can't. I, there's no way. By the time you're 30, you've lost quite a bit of your hearing. And by the time you're my age, you know, you're down to about 14,000 hertz. So CDs have plenty of frequency response for most people. And all this stuff about digital adding scratchiness or harshness to the music, that's just because people are used to the sound of records. Vinyl has its own sound. It doesn't necessarily mean it's better or worse than CDs. It's just different. And, you know, you have to remember, you know, they're taking the master tapes from the recording studio and they're bringing them into a mastering facility 
or a vinyl cutting facility, and they're transferring these recordings onto a plastic disc. They're etching the sound onto a disc. And then they're taking that disc and they're, they're spraying it with, you know, metals to make stampers so that they can then take polyvinyl carbonate and press out records. There's got to be some sound degradation in that process. Absolutely. And that's part of where records get their sound from. They do sound very good. I, I love my record collection. I love listening to vinyl. I think it's fantastic. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised it works at all. And I, I watch my records play and I marvel at the sound. It's like, how can you know this work like this? But it does. And it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And it's interesting. And it's it's romantic. And it's just like, this should not work, but it does. It's really cool. And, you know, there's the whole handling of the records and taking them out and putting them on. And there's the artwork and all that stuff everyone's already talked about. You know, that's that's all part of the whole experience of listening to vinyl. But and so CDs, you know, they they kind of have that, you know, you still own the CD and you take it out and you put it in and you press the door shut and it disappears into the CD player and then you don't see it again until it comes out at the end um, but you still have some of the artwork and you still have the the lyrics and all that stuff so it was still pretty good and I thought CDs sounded good and I still do um, they are very accurate and a lot of the um, records that you guys listen to from say the 80s um, were recorded in the exact same format that CDs are recorded in. For example, uh, my favorite band, Rush. Rush Moving Pictures. Awesome record. I have the reissue here, and it sounds fantastic. That record was recorded at 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit. So if you thought Rush Moving Pictures sounds good, you're basically listening to a CD. So, you know, we need to stop knocking these things. A lot of records were recorded in that format. They didn't have the hard drive space or the computer power to use 24-bit and or, you know, 48 kilohertz or 96 or whatever all those ridiculously unnecessary high numbers are. Um, they just had that. That's 44.1 16-bit. So a lot of people are saying, well, CDs sound harsh. Well, guess what? You know, a quarter of your record collection from the 80s was basically CD quality pressed onto vinyl. Okay, so fine. Um, maybe recording CD quality music onto vinyl fixed the CD problems, the problems of 16-bit, 44.1. Remember, 16-bit, 24-bit, all that is doing is giving you less noise. It's not improving or, or lowering or hiring the, the audio quality or the frequency response it's just lowering the noise floor. So, you know, 16-bit has a noise floor of about 90 dB, minus 90 dB. 24-bit has a noise floor of like minus 100 and, I don't know, 130 or some 140. I can't remember the exact number. Cassettes have a uh, noise floor of about minus 60 dB. Uh, records have a noise floor of about minus probably won't the same as cassettes a cassette tape has a equivalent bit depth of about eight bits maybe 12 and a record has an equivalent bit depth of about the same because the noise floor on these things is not very low it's you can hear the noise but if digital is really your enemy okay well why don't we since we've got so much hard drive space these days why don't we increase these numbers to ridiculously high amounts so that there's absolutely no way to tell the difference between digital and analog? Mind you, analog has its own inherent sounds because, well, basically analog has problems and that means that those problems become the sound of analog, you know, whether it be tape, whether it be vinyl, um, whatever other analog formats there might be out there. So, um, you know, that's why analog sounds the way it does, is because it's doing something to the sound. Digitizing music at 
appropriate levels, appropriate um, bit rates and bit depths doesn't do anything to the music. If let's say you you took okay, let's say fine, 16 bit, forget it, 24 bit, forget it, 32 bit, forget it. Let's sample our music. Let's digitize our music at 64 bits. Okay, so 64 bits um, gives you billions and billions and billions of different levels of, of loudness. So it's almost infinite. And then in, for, for a sampling rate, let's use, um, well, we won't use 44.1. We won't use 96. We won't use 192. Let's use a million samples per second or whatever multiple of 16 we could get close to a million samples per second how about that how about we sample these things at such ridiculously high levels that there's absolutely no possible way that anybody on the face of this planet or anywhere else for that matter would be able to hear the difference and would not be able to tell that something has been recorded digitally. You also have to keep in mind that we could really go so high with this that you would reach the, the point where it would be physically and scientifically impossible to sample any higher because time itself has a quant has a has a, a is quantized. Um, time, when you really magnify it and break it down so far, you can only go so far down before you get to what's called Planck. And that's where time ticks along at a specific samples, just like digital does. So in essence, time is digital. And if you don't believe me, you can look this up. So if you could sample music digitally at that plank level so that there's you could just couldn't do it any faster you wouldn't be able to tell the difference that digital format would be the best format ever better than vinyl better than cds better than magnetic tape so now there's one problem solved. We've got a format that is absolutely transparent. It's never going to affect the sound quality whatsoever. But we're missing the uh, tactile experience of taking it out of the package and putting it on. I mean, that's why a lot of us got back into records in the first place. You know, we got rid of them because we were sick of all the clicks and pops and, and scratches. But we got back into it because we missed the... Um, you know, the experience of it. And let's not even talk about MP3s. MP3s are fine. You know, at a good bit rate, at 320 kilobits per second, they sound fine. I listen to them all the time. They sound fine, you know, uh, to me and to a lot of people. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it is what it is. It's a portable, a portable format. And, and that's that. Well, I didn't want to talk about that because it's just, you know, whatever it is. That's going to improve over time. Uh, the, uh, the compression technologies, but you know, if you could get a record, you know, with the, with, I don't have one with me, with the, with the cover and the, the, you know, the album art and the sleeve and the pull out the record and, you know, have it in your hands and then put it on a turntable or on a device and then put that thing down on the reed head or the needle or whatever it is and listen to music that's been sampled at such a high bit rate and such a high bit depth that there's no way to tell the difference between that and the original recording, I think you'd have the perfect format. There you have it. And with that, I will leave you to think about this. Let that burn in your brains for a little while. Love to hear what you think down below in the comments. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget to click that little bell. Where's the little bell? Down there somewhere. Because if you click that little bell beside the subscribe button, you'll get notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, guys. This has just been fun. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm just talking. I'm just thinking out loud. It's all just fun just to, you know, to ponder all this stuff. And I really would like to, think, uh, to, to thank you for watching and to comment below what you think. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Spin those records and vinyl is final. Cheers.